Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about linear equations. And here we have two linear equations. Now, as I say that word, a linear equation, what does that sound like? Well, hopefully it sounds like the uh, line equation, right? Linear equation. So these two here are what we call two variable linear equations. Of course, you should be able to graph these on an X, Y plane if you're any uh, in any sort of algebra course, pre-algebra, algebra one, et cetera. But here we have a very specific question. Okay, so here we have one line, here we have another line. And the question is, are these lines parallel? Okay, are the lines parallel? So there's a couple different ways you can think about uh, answering this question. Of course, uh, the correct answer is either gonna be yes or no. And if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section, but back up your answer, okay? Of course, you can guess uh, either yes or no, and 50% of you, uh, you know, you got a 50-50 uh, chance of getting this thing right, but back up, justify your conclusions. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, and then, of course, I'm gonna explain the solution to this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and see the answer. Of course, it kind of gave you a bit of a, you know, hopefully kind of set up the problem nicely for those of you that might be a little bit confused. Again, we have one line here. We have another line here. Are these lines parallel? Well, if you forgot what parallel means, I'll explain all this uh, in just one second, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So the answer is, in fact, yes, they are. Okay, so that is the right answer. Now, of course, uh, you know, you only had two options for this question, right? They're either, uh, yes, they are parallel or no, they're not. But again, for those of you that got this right, you know, you really wanna make sure you can justify your conclusions, but, if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%. And a few stars, so you can celebrate your success with linear equations and determining whether two lines are in fact parallel. Okay, so let's just quickly uh, review uh, some real basic concepts here. So what does it mean to have parallel lines? Okay, or what does parallel mean again? So some of you might uh, confuse this with perpendicular, but let me just go ahead and clear up the confusion right now. So let's suppose I have one line right here. If I have another line that's parallel to it, it's basically, it would look something like this. Okay, now just intuitively going, uh, you know, when you look at this intuitively, what's going on here? Okay, well, hopefully you say, well, this line, you know, has the same angle as this line and they'll never cross, kind of like, you know, what you see you know, on a pair of uh, like uh, railroad tracks, right? They're never going to intercept. So effectively, that's what parallel means. Now, don't confuse that with perpendicular, just in case some of you were like, oh, I forgot what that means again. Perpendicular lines are lines that form a right angle, 90 degree angle, this is perpendicular. And the mathematical symbol for that is a little upside down T. So these lines, let's call that line one, let's call this line two. So line one would be perpendicular to line two. In this case, if I call this line one and I call this line two, line one would be parallel to line two. Now, in geometry, what you can do as well, you can put a little like mark like so on these lines, but then I'm kind of uh, taking that, uh, taking this problem a little bit, you know, further than it needs to be. But this is stuff that you need to know, especially if you are studying uh, like geometry. Okay, so different ways you can indicate parallel lines. But what we want to be thinking about here is the angle of these lines. Okay, so the angle. When we talk about linear equations, what is the measurement of the angle or the steepness of a line? Hopefully, you remember it's that good old term called the slope, okay, which we indicate with a uh, variable that's small m. Okay, so if we look at this, we're like, okay, this line has a particular angle or steepness to a certain slope. Well, a line that would be parallel to this line would also have the same slope. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. Now, uh, when we take a look at our two lines in question, if some of you are like, well, let me just go ahead and graph this line and then graph this line and you know determine 
whether in fact, you know, these two lines, you know, are parallel, that would be maybe an okay approach uh, if you had like say graph paper, but that's not what we want to do. Matter of fact, here, we don't even need to um, look at the X, Y plane. All we need to do is have a good understanding of the slope of a linear equation or slope of a line, okay? Now, what we're gonna do in both of these lines is find the slope, okay? So here, we're gonna find the slope of this line, and then here we'll find the slope of this line. And in fact, if these two slopes are the same, then what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that these two lines are indeed parallel. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with this line here, this linear equation here, because determining the slope of this linear equation is so, so easy. Let's go ahead and take a look exactly how you do that. So what you wanna be thinking about is this form of a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. We call this the slope-intercept form. It's probably the most common uh, form of a line or a linear equation. So the number, in front of the uh, variable x is the slope, okay? This number over here is the y-intercept. So just to be clear, the y-intercept is the point um, where this line crosses the y-axis. So this point right there would be the y-intercept, um, this particular line, and right here that would be the y-intercept, but it's labeled with this point b. Okay, so... Here we have y equals mx plus b. We're not really interested in b. Okay, I'm not, I don't really need to know that. I just need to know the slope of this line. Okay, so let's take a look at our first line, which is y equals 3x plus 1. And we can see that y equals 3x plus 1 isn't y equals mx plus b form or slope-intercept form. So you have to have just a y, not a number in front of y, like you know 5y, nothing like that. Y by itself equals uh, then a number in front of x plus or minus another number. So you can see that uh, this linear equation is perfectly in y equals mx plus p form, slope-intercept form. So all I have to do is look at that number in front of x, and that is my slope. So in this line, the slope is 3. That is so, so easy, right? So I'm like, wow, okay. So, uh, you know, too bad that this other line uh, is not in y equals mx plus uh, y equals mx plus b form. Excuse me, I'm trying to say that fast three times, right? So, uh, anyways, so what we can do though is fix up this line such that it is in y equals mx plus b form. All right, so now uh, what we're gonna need to do to do this? So here's our line. We want to write it in slope-intercept form, i.e., y equals mx plus b. So notice here. This uh, format of this line, this form, it's y equals. Okay, so if I take this equation and I solve for the variable y, y equals, well, I'm effectively going to be putting this uh, linear equation into slope-intercept form. So this is where students get a little bit confused. Now, if you're already kind of having trouble with what I'm talking about, like, yeah, I'm studying this in school, and I'm a little bit confused on this, you need to really know how to solve equations, especially when there's uh, solve for a specific variable when there's multiple var variables in an equation. It's really, really important in algebra. So I'm gonna direct uh, those of you out there that need extra help in this to either my pre-algebra or algebra one course, all right? You're gonna wanna review how to solve equations, linear equations, and then you can get into um, you know all the additional things about graphing lines, finding the equations, the lines, etc. But make sure your equation solving skills are strong. All right, so here again, what we're going to do is um, take this linear equation and solve for y. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 9x to both sides of the equation. Okay, so you can see this work right here. So when I add down in a column manner, I get uh, 3y plus nothing is 3y. Negative 9x plus 9x is 0, so that goes away. I don't need to write that 0 there. And this is going to be 7 plus 9x, but we'll write this as 9x plus 7 because remember, it's going to be y equals mx plus b, so we want to have that variable term first. Okay, so we're almost there. We have uh, 3y is equal to 9x plus 7, but we want y is equal to, and cannot 3y is equal to. So to fix this up, all I have to do is divide uh, everything by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1y, or y, 
9 divided by 3, of course, is 3 or 3x, three and then we, here we have 7 thirds. Okay, so we are done, and what we just did here is uh, write that linear equation into y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form. So this number here, 3, is the slope of this line, so its slope is 3. Okay, so let's go back to what we have here. So our first uh, linear equation that we looked at, its slope was 3, and our second linear equation we had to fix up. We had to solve for y and put this into slope-intercept form, but when we did that, we saw that its slope uh, is 3 as well. Okay, so basically, these two lines have the same angle, the same, same steepness, the same slope, indicating they are parallel. So we can kind of just uh, write this little fancy thing. Now, this is a kind of a little bonus thing I kind of threw in here. So when you study advanced uh, mathematics or mathematics, but especially advanced math and really, you know, high level mathematics, you really get, um, you know, very good with using different uh, uh, notation, short, shorthand, if you will. So this little um, three dots means therefore. Okay, so I can say therefore... All right, after all this work, line one is parallel to line two. And of course, I could label this as line one and label, label this as line two. But I just kind of threw that in just to kind of um, let you know what this little symbol means, just in case you come across it. OK, there's a lot of little uh, symbols that, you know, it all depends on what math books you're using or what level of mathematics you um, what level of math you're in. But as you progress into more advanced mathematics, you start learning all different types of notation. So, you know, again, math is a language, all right? And everything that you're learning in math, you know, you're learning about the verbs, the adjectives, uh, you know, the nouns, the meanings, how to write a story, how to express something. And really, that's what you want to think of. You know, math is a language. So no way you're going to be fluent in any language that you want to learn. Let's say you want to learn Spanish or German. You're not going to be fluent in that language without understanding the basics. And math is no different. Okay, so hopefully this video helps you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.